Hi, hi, hello, and welcome to my disaster process. And I don't mean that as a self-deprecating joke this time like I normally do. I mean this was a disaster to get to work. It, footage was lost, computer's a mess, it's asthmatic, it's wheezing, it's on its last leg. I don't know if this will pick it up because Windows Movie Maker most certainly did when I tried the narration option, but I digress. I'll explain it better in the description if you want to read that. I don't know why you would, but I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, I did like two sketches in this one because I really wanted the pose to be more fluid because in the first piece, she's very stiff and she's just looking straight at the camera. It's just a very basic, I can draw a front pose and that's about it because that's where I was at the time. And she didn't take up the canvas very well. She was just plopped in the middle and her skirt took up a lot of the bottom of it for no real reason. So this time I wanted it to be more fluid. I have her kind of bent, she's looking to the side and her skirt actually follows some like wind pattern or something, I guess. I don't know what's affecting it, but it still looks nice, I guess. So yeah, that was one thing I had to really focus on this time because last time I most certainly had not, but then again, I was probably about 15, so probably didn't know how to do. Uh, and I just, uh, laid down a bunch of like details this time that I didn't do the last time like seams and uh, hand wrinkles and just a bunch of different things that I hadn't thought to the initial uh, drawing because again I was like 15 and I didn't draw digitally a lot it was like my first ever digital piece and I was mainly a pen and paper kind of gal so I didn't do it very frequently so this time I wanted to just have it be very fun and dynamic and I am repeating myself but yeah anyways uh I probably am getting close to the part where I lost some footage uh sorry again I don't know what happened it's just a mess uh so all that's really missed is me laying down some colors and using that really cool colorized feature that Clip Studio Paint has uh I don't know what it does really I just really like messing with the feature because of like how it messes in with the boundaries and it kind of makes things a bit more pastel and it also takes some of the palette and it melts it together in a weird way i don't know i probably shouldn't rely on it as much as i do uh, so i will throughout the like the year use it less and less because since i've discovered the tool i've used it way too often but uh yeah i used that to kind of get a more pastel purple because in the first drawing it was a very bright purple and it was a very bright pink and they just really clashed um especially with the background which was as you'll see at the end uh, a very weird gray with like a bright green to the side and it didn't make much sense uh, so this time i just focused on having the color palette work a bit better and i used like some of the tools on clip studio to do that and also just like my new knowledge of color palettes and how they work uh, but as a result, I also kind of overcompensated a bit because uh, like if you'll notice the um, shoulder poofs and the bracelets and the belt are currently like a bluish shade. And in the first drawing, they were like a yellow, like a dandelion yellow or something, maybe a golden yellow, I don't know. And I thought when I was redrawing it that, oh, it'd be really fun to have it like work better with the color palette have it be like a blue shade or something uh but then in the end i kind of like changed it back to that yellow because i realized oh there's a reason why it popped uh initially and why i initially had had like the yellow so like point to young me for uh knowing to have like a brighter color or whatever i mean i guess the bright green of the cauldron does that but like something about the witch girl just needed that pop of color that wasn't there before uh, especially with the background, which even though it does have like those hints of like the gray and the blue green from before, they're kind of blurred out and they're like very uh, light tones that I put a dark overlay layer on along with a blur effect. So it's just kind of out in the background and very indistinct. Uh, so like she kind of needed that distinction because when I started adding the shadow and the light, uh, she was there, but she wasn't really popping, and for some reason the yellow was just something that was, like, really needed to help distinguish her better from the background and the cauldron, in a way. Uh, but yeah, 
uh, when I first started the lighting, I just wanted to do the under the chin kind of fun lighting effect because I hadn't done any lighting. I hadn't messed around with it at all in the first piece. And part of that is because when I did the first piece, uh, I didn't really know how to. If you'll look, sh her face isn't even shaded from like her hair around her face. And like, there's not even that much of a difference between like her chin and her neck. It's just kind of the minimal amount of shading that, like needed to differentiate the two. So I just really played around with lighting and I might've done too much. I could argue that, but I thought it was fun to do the under chin lighting and then eventually like the blue side lighting that I did later. Which the blue lighting was completely ad-libbed. Uh, that's like with a lot of my things, I never really plan what I'm gonna do. I just kind of uh, do it as I go, which isn't probably the best, but either way. Um, you can probably see right about now the old drawing where it's the witch girl, she's very stiff. And then here's the new one, which I think I did really well on. I think I improved. Um, that's a bit about it. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for 11 subscribers. Have a nice day.